Hello and welcome to Precontation Points Video Stark. I read books and talk about what went wrong. I'm continuing my read through of Alienated by Melissa Landers. Not the first video, go check out the others. Links are posted below. Chapter 7 The bath was one of the few places she could be alone now. Connell Rattle wasn't kidding when he'd called the leap a job. She'd worked overtime making Elix feel at home the last couple of weeks. I legit don't know what she was expecting. She's at the forefront of human-alien relations, and she's surprised that it's a freaking chore. And the bar, Kara looks at her blog and... Stop. Please stop. I will do anything so long as the author doesn't zap us back to 2000s-era live journal. A special thanks to vegan underscore Mandy for suggesting the following theme days. I'm sending you an extra gooey, totally vegan, home-baked virtual cookie. Can you taste the love? I did this when I was 12, and I have a feeling that the author did as well. What I'm not certain of is if the kids are writing like this still. Since it's Wednesday, she always posts a random fact about the aliens. She writes that a long time ago, the aliens decided that body hers served no purpose, so bred it out from the people. So Alex has no body here. And then, <sighs> can we not? The narration goes, such and such user commented and gives us an unholy amount of screen names. The author was probably fairly proud of herself for having come up with so many different ones. I'm only annoyed because I have to read this. While it's not half as bad as the email headers in Fifty Shades, this is for sure up there. However, because the internet, there are trolls who are like, I don't like the aliens except our way ruder, and somebody who demands that Kara asks Alex about weapons and calls her the B-word. Tori is in the comments and calls out a couple of the commenters who are clearly from their school. From there, it got really ugly. Who knew such an innocent bit of trivia could incite so much drama? Is this your first day on the internet? I'm surprised not nobody has compared the aliens to Hitler yet. Kara has her bath while thinking about how it's the first round of televised interviews tonight. She doesn't know what to wear, which, mm, yeah, not touching that one. Her dad knocks on the door to tell her that Tori is there and Kara asks that Tori be made to wait in her room. When Kara gets out, she finds Tori going through Alex's things. She quickly pulls her friend out and calls her deranged for going through somebody's things like that. As they leave, they run into Alex, who says that he'd been getting some air before the interview. However, Kara knows that he's been doing that a lot and would come in covered in dirt and tracking leaves inside. Maybe he'd been secretly meeting a girl in the woods. A surge of completely irrational jealousy swelled beneath her ribcage as she reminded herself Alex didn't have any girlfriends. I'm really over the slow burn relationship in this book. The girl slips into Kara's room where Kara realizes her friend has been crying. She says that the student council arranged for meetings and failed to tell her about it, and the rule says that when you miss more than three meetings, they can kick you off from the team, so they did that. Although, I have a feeling that the reason why she was kicked out is because she'd been hanging around Elix and the rest of the members of the student council are all racist. Tori says that she doesn't want to go to the teacher about it because she doesn't want to hang out with people who hate her, which is fair, and then she randomly complains that so-and-so was going to invite her to prom, but not anymore. This is immediately followed by her baking card to send Elix packing, which, exactly what part of year-long exchange is confusing to Tori? The two of them fight about it, which Kara says that she's coming to tolerate Elix. Tori says that she doesn't like the way that he looks at Kara and, and has to demonstrate. Then she made a circle with one hand and stuck her index finger through it in an X-rated puppet show. Like he wants to dock his ship instead of your spaceport. New favorite euphemism. Tori calls Alex a stalker and asks Kara if she's monitoring what she's eating and drinking. And then complains that despite Kara being single now, she still doesn't get to see her friend much anymore. Which I'm 100% counting as a personal problem of Tori's. Because she came to the house and proved that she can spend time with Kara, but isn't willing to because of Alex. Tori isn't a good friend at all. She's judgmental and rude. Later, Kara sits back and watches as the camera crew comes in and starts to set up. Somebody calls her house a dub, calls her dad a dud, and calls her mom fat. Which, wow, yeah, with a frick frack paddy whack. She also tells Kara not to wear the pink top she'd chosen earlier, but since the lady is so rude, it makes Kara double down and wearing pink anyway. However, her passive-aggressive comments about Alex's sour resting face doesn't exactly have the intended effect. He plays dumb when she calls him a cyborg, and the woman continues on about how advanced the aliens are, yet they look so lifeless. Car screams at the woman to stop. The woman then says that the parents are boring and nobody would want to see them anyway. She, she instead wants to create a narrative about the growing relationship between Car and Alex. Kara gets angry when she realizes that the woman wants to literally invent an almost Hunger Games-esque narrative to paint Kara and Alex as lovers, and I think that I'm going to scream if that happens.
The two kids sit next to each other and Alex leans over to whisper in Dakar's ear. On my planet, she'd never be allowed to reproduce and no one would clone her. She's awful. I'm all in favor of breeding programs that weed out people who lack empathy and basic manners. They start the interview, but Carr is forced to lie about how normal things are despite the daily protests outside of the school. And students openly recruited new members for Haley right there in the hallway as she and Elix pass. They wore little gold pins in the shape of angel wings. Why would it not be a halo? It was literally right there and she missed it. Alex is asked why he was selected for the program and he says that he has a knack for learning languages. He says that he learned English in a week and goes on to say that it's a fairly uncomplex language. And then he continues on and says that he spent another week learning about the history of Earth and war warfare. He next says that he finds the colors on Earth beautiful and makes a backhanded comment about how industry is destroying the most beautiful parts of Earth. Then, much to Kara's chagrin, he tells them about how Kara had attempted to make the flatbread, but doesn't go into details other than that she tried to do it. The lady then randomly points out Kara's next list, which, exactly what kind of a rock is it that it's somehow more unique than literally any of the thousands of rocks we have here on Earth? Kara makes a mistake of telling her that Alex had given it to her for her birthday, which the lady jumps on quickly. She starts to spin it into that romance, which only infuriates Kara more. The rest of the interview is glossed over. As Kara leaves, she thinks that those who aren't on Team Aliens are gonna, aren't going to watch it and be convinced. She goes into her room where she starts to write another blog post in order to get ahead of how the interview might be spun. And certain journalists want you to think that I'm letting Elix stun me with his laser, if you know what I mean. Well, even if people do try to Hunger Games their relationship, at least Kara isn't going to stand for it. But I'm not sure how well that her blog post is going to go in comparison to a national broadcast, but whatever. I know that venting into the void makes anybody feel better, so okay. A noise startles her from her post and she goes to the window to check it out. She watches as a mysterious figure slips inside of the shed but then realizes that it's only Elix. But that only raises further questions since it's literally midnight and why is he sneaking into the shed? As she watches, he leaves and goes into the woods with a box in hand. She wonders what it could be and starts to think that maybe Tori is a little right in doubting him. Chapter 8 Car seems to be catching on to the stuff that Alex likes to eat, such as unsalted crackers or air pop popcorn with no salt or butter. And when it came to bland, not even introductory statistics can compete with mom's roast. I say this as a white person, but with the fresh hack. Car then offers her dad some flimsy excuses to him why she needs to borrow his stethoscope and takes it upstairs to listen to Alex in the other room. She hears him talking to whom she assumes are the other two exchange students but can't understand them since they're speaking in their native language. But they sound relaxing or even laughing so Car assumes that they're just talking about dumb teenager stuff. In the few days since spotting Alex going out for his midnight stroll, Kara had, Kara had been keeping a close eye on him, but the only thing she noticed was that he was becoming more relaxed and seemed to be picking up on several Earth habits. She wonders if he hadn't been looking in the shed for the same reason why you look in other people's medicine closets. Curiosity. But there's still that lingering down in the back of her mind. Eventually, Kara feels like she's bailing silly and decides to spend time with Tori. The girl had apparently also been kicked off from the soccer team, too. But when she can't reach Tori via her cell or via her home phone, Kara goes downstairs to tell her mom with dinner. Kara ends up taking Elix a plate since he has trouble being around the smells. Truth be told, he looked hotter than the stoneware burning through the arm of her sweater. I had to read this and so do you! Kara convinces him to come down and try the roast and saying that Eileen added no salt or anything to it. She also promises that if he doesn't like it, then she won't pester him about food for a week. He agrees and when he comes down, Eileen says that she also got some tofu, which is pretty tasteless. Eileen is in a bad mood because she almost got fired from her job at the library. Kara thinks that it's funny because it's a volunteer position and you can't really fire people from it. Eileen says that the head librarian stepped in and that she doesn't want to talk about it anymore. Alex takes a bite and says that it tastes like something that's a staple on his planet. Kara makes a joke that maybe her brother is up on the planet eating the food and comparing it to Eileen's roast. Bill complains that they haven't heard from Troy yet, but... But Alex says that email is an outdated system and that Troy should have given the same kind of communication device Alex had been using to talk with his friends. However, as he says this, Kara knows that Alex is being nice and that there's something other than a disrupting line to preventing Troy's emails from coming through, but she doesn't want to say anything and upset her mother further. Later, Kara asks her mom to make the roast every night that week if only so that Alex can have something to eat. 
Chapter 9. The next morning, as they're walking to school, Brandy with an eye runs over to them. She tells Elix that she watched interviews through time. Elix doesn't seem to care. She asks about the babies on his planet and asks if it's true that the government tells you who to be with. This makes Kara think of all the teen pregnancies that happened in their town, and in this author's usual way, it comes across as too strong. Elix explains that before when the breeding program was around the government the government would pick a male and female to breed together. When Brandy expresses how horrifying that it must be to made to mate with somebody the government picks, he looks as quick to say that they wouldn't have to be intimate with one another. Oh no, how barbaric and primitive. They have artificial wombs and such. Brandy asks if nobody does the do at all. He looks as that sometimes people do, but that it only leads to complications, which he doesn't elaborate upon. When pressed further by Kara, he says that everybody takes pills to regulate those urges, which sounds awesome, not gonna lie. Doing it is great, but it would be even better if society would stop obsessing over it constantly. He goes on to say that the government was weaning society off from those pills, though, probably because they bred out any desire to want to do it or something. Clara consents that Elix is uncomfortable with the conversation, so she asks if he's okay, that he's been seizing a lot. Elix plays along, and they spin the story about how Elix's snot gave some guy a delete gala and mystery rash. Elix acts like his bodily fluids are so different from humans that it does stuff like that. This makes Brandy freak out and run off to go wash her hands. In class, Elix tells them about how violence was bred out and how they take their aggressions out via sports. But mostly, what seems to keep them in line is the fact that they are brought up in this super strict society that doesn't tolerate any nonsense. Our last war ended thousands of years ago. Your wars in the Middle East have barely ceased and there's already conflict simmering again. Humans have yet to move beyond the cycle of aggression. He's right, though. Humans haven't moved on past the 12th century when we were screaming over which religious path was the right one and which skin color is the superior one. But at the same time, I'm really over the author's heavy-handed social commentary, especially if she's going to be this smug about it. After class ends, the two of them wait until the room empties before going to lunch. Along the way, Kara tears down some of the Halo posters and Elix tells her that it's a good way to take out her aggression. Tori comes over to them and tells them that she got a note with only traitor B word on it. Kara offhandedly says that she got the same note earlier too in it, and Elix is upset that she wouldn't have told him. I got kicked off from student council and the soccer team. She blew a lock of hair out from her eye, but for some reason I'm still hanging out with you. I hope you appreciate this. Literally, nobody's forcing you to hang around Kara and Elix, so while I'm sorry people are being terrible towards you, my sympathy only extends so far, especially with a stink attitude like that, especially when the narration goes out of its way to remind the readers that Tori would like for Elix to return to his planet. Some school bully named Marcus comes over and gets angry that Kara was ripping down the Halo posters. Tori gets in his face for having left the notes in his lockers, but he plays them about that. Although there's probably a lot of people at the school who share the same feelings, so maybe he really didn't leave the notes. Although, I don't know why I'm defending him. Marcus gets angry when Kara rips another poster off and shoves it into the trash. He then tells Kara that Brandy said that the alien spit was acidic and, points, and pointedly tells her that it might improve her face. Elix has stood by and said nothing during the entire exchange, but when Marcus shoves Kara, Elix loses it. He forcefully throws Marcus into the lockers, and naturally everybody in the hall saw the entire thing. This results in them spending over an hour in the principal's office, although Elix is only defending Kara. It's Marcus who should be explaining himself and being made to apologize for making school a hostile environment with hate speech. As Elix sits, he anticipates getting lashes, and said he gets an after-school detention to be served with Marcus, and Marcus is suspended, which seems pathetic considering he's literally hanging up racist flyers and making threats against some of the female students. After being dismissed from the principal's office, Elix runs out from the school without another word and disappears into the woods. He pulls up the communication device but can only reach Iran. He complains that he can't wait another month to get off from the planet. Iran encourages him to be patient because it would be disastrous if they rushed their whatever secret project that Elix needs to stop letting the humans go to out Elix into an emotional response. Elix admits that Iran is right and goes back to class while inwardly admitting that he's going to touch to Kara. 
Thanks for listening to my book snark on YouTube. New videos are up every Monday, but stick around because I sometimes drop random videos on other days too. Just as a reminder, even if you can't financially support me, there are other ways to help me out. The first is watching this video as well as all my other videos. It's also important to like and subscribe. Finally, you can share this video with all of your friends so that they can help as well. If you're already caught up with all of my videos, you can go to Tumblr for my main book snarks, always free and updated every morning. And if you've already read all of my main snarks, then you can find even more snark on my Patreon. You can access it for $1 a month. Members also get early access to my main Tumblr snark. Special thanks to Dawn, Phoebe, and Nikki for supporting me on Patreon already. If you want to hear your name in my video next week, either support me on Patreon or make a one-time donation. Do you like my snarks so much that you want me to snark your writing? I do that too. For just $6 per chapter, I will tell you how awful that your writing is. But not to worry if you feel like you couldn't take the criticism. I also offer regular book editing as well, just one cent per word. You can contact me on any of my social media platforms if you have further questions. If you want to read some of the things that I've written, you can purchase my works on Amazon. I have a slew of erotic short stories and now two full-length novels. I also sometimes run flash sales on my stories, and if you don't follow me on any social media, you might want to do so just so you can know when I might be offering more things for free. Links for everything will be posted below. See you next week, guys!